Hello, my friend. I am so excited for this video because I did a bunch of research on fragrances. And one of the things that I did as far as my research was I asked on the Twitters, I asked you all what questions you had about fragrances. And I was very excited to learn the answers to your most popular questions, such as how to make a fragrance last longer? Why do some fragrances smell different on different people? Do fragrances have shelf lives? Uh, what What's the deal with notes? How does that all work? I've got the answers to those questions and many more. If that sounds interesting to you, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by FragranceNet.com. They are a perfume company that has been in business since 1997, selling perfumes online at a discount price. On their website, they say that they sell only 100% authentic products, but they are able to sell these at a discount price because they don't have physical stores and the overhead costs of physical stores, that they get all of their products from the same place as the department stores. It's just they don't have as much overhead cost. So so like for example, a bottle of Juicy Couture Viva Le Juicy at Ulta is $99. At FragranceNet, it's $57. And if you use one of their 30% off codes, it will cost $39.89, which is absolutely insane as far as the cost goes. For Clinique's Happy, which is another popular one, for a 3.4 ounce, it's $70 at Ulta. At FragranceNet, it's $50. And if you use that code, you can get it for $34.99. Now, y'all know, I'm a researcher. I look into things. And when I first said, said yes for the sponsorship, I looked at their Better Business Bureau rating. It was very, very high. Uh, any complaints were handled on the Better Business Bureau, looked great. And the more I dug after Christmas, as I was preparing for this video, I noticed there were some other complaints on other websites that didn't seem to be addressed. So I talked to FragranceNet and they said that they feel that a lot of the complaints that are coming in through different websites are complaints from people that haven't yet contacted customer service and had customer service help them. So for example, people that weren't happy with their fragrances, they say that they will refund 100% of open fragrances. If you don't like them for any reason, they will refund your money. So thank you to FragranceNet for sponsoring this video. I will link their website down below if you are interested. Now, without further ado, let's go into the very first question. The big reason why people wear perfume is because it's psychological. We want some good smells around us. We want other people to think we smell good. We don't want to smell bad. We want other people to think we smell bad. So people, so they spray on little perfume so that they are cologne, so they, they smell a little nice. Our sense of smell actually processes faster in our brain than our other senses. So that's why when you smell something, immediately you get some kind of emotional response. Those other senses are all routed through the thalamus, the part of your brain that sends them off into the appropriate processing centers. But smells bypass all that. Once they're detected by receptors in your nose, the signal heads straight to your olfactory bulb, the smell analyzing region in your brain. And that area happens to be connected to the amygdala and the hippocampus, which are parts of the brain that help handle memory and emotion. So like for example, when I smell mothballs, I get a very positive response because little did I know my grandma's house smelled like mothballs. She passed away a very long time ago. So now whenever I smell mothballs, I think of my grandmother's house. Now now someone else who may have had a negative experience with mothballs may have a negative response to that scent. But our history and our feelings towards certain scents is unique to each person. And I think that's part of why some people have different fragrance preferences that other people may not have. There's a woman named Rachel Hertz and she is a psychologist at Brown University and she wrote a book called The Scent of Desire, Discovering Our Enigmatic Sense of Smell. And this I thought was kind of interesting. She said that single men that she interviewed wear cologne or perfume, whatever you want to call it, to attract a partner. But once they have their partner, they pretty much seem to only wear cologne or perfume in order to uh, make the person happy that purchased it for them, which I thought was really odd. Hey, babe, why do you wear, do you wear your cologne just to, like because somebody bought it for you? No, I wear it because I like the scent of it. So you wear it because you like to smell good still. Compliments. Okay. <laughs> <for people. laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so there you go, from a married man. So I don't think that that's necessarily accurate. But then the interesting part was her data that she found on women, which was quite different. She said their reasons depended mostly on their age. So the women in their 20s were inspired by media. So if it was endorsed by a celebrity or created by a celebrity, they were really influenced by that. Women in their 30s didn't seem to have any particular focus, which was kind of interesting. Women in their 40s wear a fragrance because simply because they like it, I guess, kind of like what John was saying. And then women in their 60s are wearing it because someone recommended it or purchased it for them. So you have to tell me how accurate you think that is. I'm not quite sure about that. It seems a little mm, to me. A question that I got on Twitter a lot was the different types of perfume and how to know which one to buy for you. So there are different types of perfume that are usually a mix between synthetic and natural oils along with some kind of alcohol base. And the alcohol dilutes those oils, but the alcohol isn't there because they're trying to be cheap and trying to dilute the good stuff. It's because it, the alcohol helps the notes to stand out, the different fragrances and scents to stand out. If you just have a straight, perfume, a perfume oil, you're not going to get the same complexities as one that's diluted with alcohol. So I found a few different websites with some conf conflicting information, but this is just in general. Perfume is the heaviest one. They said, this one website said it was between 15 and 40% essential oils. Usually they have heavier bottles that use stoppers rather than sprays, and they usually are the most expensive and also the most complex. They typically have the longest wear time at about 60 to eight hours. Next, we have Eau de Parfum, which is a 10 to 15% essential oil mixed with alcohol. They usually have a lighter scent. Sometimes they have a stopper. Sometimes they have a spray. They typically last about four to six hours and they have a longer trail, which we're gonna talk about in a little while what a trail is. So keep that, you know, Hold that in your back pocket for just a second. Next is the eau de toilette. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to go, <laughs> it said toilet. I was a little child and I thought that was really funny, but it's eau de toilette and it is four to 15% essential oils. It's very light. Uh, it's mostly in spray bottles and those typically last two to three hours. And then we have eau de cologne. And I always thought cologne always meant it was for men and perfume was always for women. Apparently not. I went to Sephora's website and Ulta's website and there were lots of fragrances for men that were not labeled cologne, so I'll learn something new. If it is labeled a cologne, it's usually a concentration of a fragrance in two to 5%, and it should only last about two hours. And then there's something called Eau Fresh, Eau Fresh, uh, one to 3% essential oils, and it lasts one to two hours. I would imagine those are kind of like the Bath and Body Works, like the body sprays and things like that, those like light, you know, body sprays. Other factors that go into these, because this isn't an exact, like there's no legal definition of any of this, so it's it's not an exact thing, but other things that can factor into here are the quality of the essential oils used, the method they use to make the product, and also how long it's been aged, because that can affect different uh, essential oils as far as how long they've been aged. One thing that I learned is that some brands will offer two different versions. So they may have an eau de parfum and an eau de toilette and they're actually slightly different scents. So if you've smelled one and not the other, you may wanna smell both in order to make your purchasing choice. Another question I got was about storage and shelf life. And a big thing that I read was that you want to keep it out of direct sunlight, that that can absolutely ruin a perfume. Also, uh, very high temperatures can ruin a perfume. What was recommended by the professionals was a cool, dark place, and definitely never leaving your bottle open because it's kind of like uh, when you leave a wine bottle open, it can mess with the flavor of the wine. It's similar with perfume. You always wanna make sure that it's capped up if it you have that option. The scent should, be pretty stable for at least two years, but it's going to depend on what essential oils are in there, if it can last longer or not. There are some people that were confused about notes and what notes are. Notes are just individual scents. So typically when we talk about notes, we talk about the top notes, the middle notes or the heart notes, and then the base notes. I did see somewhere that they talked about the top, the middle, and the heart, but basically it's the three things. And what it is is that they put the lightest, area, smallest molecule is the top note, and then it gets heavier as you go along because those top notes are going to evaporate first, leaving the middle 
middle notes or the heart notes, and then the bass notes, the ones that are the heaviest molecule that will last the longest. Typical top notes are like citrus and powders and florals and fruits. Usually those last about five to 15 minutes before the heart notes really start coming through. Those are usually heavier fruits and florals. And then in the bass note, we get all of those musky, heavy scents. There's a website, I think it's pronounced fragrantica.com, and I will link that down below for you. And they actually have some great descriptions of some of the notes that I wasn't really sure what it smelled like, because it's like, what in the world does baobab smell like? I have no idea. I have never smelled baobab, but they have a description on their website. They also have things like ylang ylang and frangipani and elderflower and jackfruit and kumquat and bergamot and all these things that you may not know off the top of your head what it smells like, like you might know what an orange smells like, things like that. Unfortunately, they don't have great descriptions for all of the scents, but it's a nice place to look if you're not sure. This was a question I got a lot about the cost. Why the world are fragrances $100, $1,000? I was watching John McLean the other day. And John, if you've never seen John McLean, oh my gosh, okay. Removing it from its casket with great ease, a good night's kiss comes in a rather tactile square bottle with a gold-plated cap and plaque. Further information on Roger Pepham's branding can be located on the sides and back, all in gold, of course. This truly exquisite perfume is made in England. This highly impressive cap has a total of 14 Swarovski crystals that glisten and twinkle like the stars. Finished with Roger's signature and a protective plastic lining, I fully understand that for some people, the Roger Pepham's will be an investment. We are dealing with luxury. 100 mils of the Roger Pepham's a good night's kiss retails at approximately £1,250. It was like $2,500 for this perfume that he was holding up. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, it, it's insane. I mean, but it had like Swarovski crystals on it and it was like, you know, I don't know. So anyway, why do fragrances cost that much? So a lot of it is because of the essential oils in it and rare ingredients. So like, for example, some flowers only bloom one month out of the entire year and they can only harvest so much so that's gonna be more expensive. Expensive. There's an essential oil called oud, and that comes from a specific tree that's been infected with a certain kind of mold to give you the oud scent. So it's things like that. They used to use uh, oils. I don't know if they still do. I think some companies still do. They're harvested from different animals, such as like the musk deer and sperm whales and things like that. Definitely, if you're vegan, you may want to double check in the fragrances, especially if they're more expensive to make sure that they're vegan. Email the manufacturer or whatever, because there's some crazy stuff that happens with musk. I will leave a link down below if you wanna read more, but I'm gonna spare you the details. But a lot of the musk now is made artificially. It's not actually harvested from musk deer. So that's a good thing in my opinion. So an essential oil like that, of course, is gonna be very expensive, but then sometimes they'll make a man-made version of that scent. So it's not really the same exact thing. So they can charge that at a less expensive price. Also, you have to keep in mind the packaging. Some of the packaging is extremely elaborate, very, very expensive. Also, celebrity endorsements can cost a lot of money and you're paying for that as well when you buy the product. And sometimes you're just paying for the name. You're paying for it to be from Gucci or YSL or whatever. You're paying for that luxury feeling for that luxury name. And those actually are not considered high-end luxury perfumes and colognes where I don't even know the names of the ones that are the high-end luxury perfumes and colognes. Like, I, I don't even have those in my mind. They're not even on my radar. But the prices can definitely go up to some real, real hot prices. So you may be wondering why you may smell one perfume as one thing and someone else may smell it differently. And it's because we have a different number of odor receptors in our noses. Everyone is born genetically with a different number of receptors. And depending on the number of receptors you have, you smell things differently. Like the website that I looked at, they were talking about cilantro and how some people really smell that soapy cilantro scent. And some people don't. Some people smell something that's a little more herbal and fresh. I personally smell herbal and fresh, but I know there are some people that they say they come over to my house, just please don't put any cilantro in mine because it tastes like soap. I get it. It's not better or worse to be one way or another. It's just different and it affects the way we, set, we smell different scents. And like I was talking about earlier with the mothballs, our experiences shape our preferences. So like when I was younger, 
my first experience with perfume was Debbie Gibson's Electric Youth, which was very, very fruity of a scent. And then I matured into Britney Spears land and started wearing those and Taylor Swift perfumes and things like that. And I really liked those fruity scents. I had a, I liked eating fruit and it just, it, I thought that it smelled very good to smell like fruit and food. Now, as I'm getting older and now that I've been married for a while, my husband wears very spicy scents. So I kind of lean toward more spicy and fruity scents and kind of have that mix of, of what my preferences are. And speaking of my preferences, I do want to show you some of my favorite perfumes because I know some people are going to ask. And also FragranceNet did send me a few perfumes to show you that are some of my favorites. So this one, if you've known me for a while, you know, this is one of my favorites. This is Tom Ford Black Orchid. Very, very spicy, sexy kind of scent. Really, really love this scent a lot. Uh, and the last thing on this is wonderful. Another one that I love a lot that's on the more fruity side is Escada Magnetism. This one, is if we're going fruity sexy, it's like there's more fruit than sex. Wait. You know what I'm trying to say? Maybe, maybe, okay, we're, we're kid friendly here, Jen, kid friendly. Um, so if you want something a little more fruity, you still want that sexiness in there, this one's a good one. But a new favorite of mine, I actually saw this when I went to go visit Hannah over at Smoky Glow. She said this one was really good and I'm really thankful they sent some, this to me. This is the YSL Black Opium and I think this might end up being my favorite over the Tom Ford. It is just a little bit sweeter than the Tom Ford. This is really spicy. This is a little less spicy, but it's still spicy. So I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence now, which one I like better, black opium or black orchid. I don't know. If you have a preference, let me know what you think down in the comments below or your favorite perfume. I would love to know down below. The by far biggest question that I got on Twitter was how to make fragrances last longer. And one thing that's really important to note is that fragrances are going to naturally last longer on some people than other people. But the biggest factor in lasting power on differences between people is your skin type. So whether you have dry skin or oily skin, dry skin people, unfortunately, your perfumes are not going to last as long as oily skinned people. So a way to make make your fragrances last longer is to moisturize before. Get an unscented moisturizer, rub that all over, and then spray your perfume on. That should help significantly. Or you can always purchase the lotion that comes with the fragrance, the, the matching lotion. That'll, of course, add on to the scent. Um, but honestly, like, I feel like, you know, buying a bottle of Lubriderm is probably a better investment than buying just that lotion for that hydration purpose. Everyone's pH level is different on our skin as well, and that's gonna affect the lasting power of it. The climate that you're in can also affect your scent. Uh, heat is definitely a way that you can have more scent come out. If you're in a colder environment, you're not gonna have as much scent come out. So what you wanna do is apply it to your pulse points because that is where the most heat is coming from your body is here, here, backs of the knees, inside of the elbows, things like that. Along the same line, the question was, why do knockoff perfumes not last as long as the real thing? And the big reason why is because a lot of times they don't use the essential oils, they're using synthetic versions of the essential oils, and they're not going to last as long. They also may be using a higher alcohol content, which is going to dilute the scent. People ask about spraying it on clothes versus spraying it on your skin. Now, y'all know, I am not a fan of putting any kind of denatured alcohol on the skin. It dries your skin, it ages your skin, it is not a good thing, yet I still wear perfume. You know, I mean, you gotta live your best life, and sometimes I like to smell good, so I do occasionally put some perfume on my skin. But an alternative to that, especially if you have sensitive skin, is to spray it on your clothes. You can also spray it on your hairbrush and then brush it through your hair as an alternative. But what you lose when you don't spray it on your skin is you're, you're losing that pH mix with your personal pH and your body heat that is going to help it be a unique fragrance to you. If you're spraying it on your hair or your clothes, you're going to get a very generic scent. You might get a different version of the dissipation of the notes than you would if it was on your skin versus on your clothes. In the end, it ju you just have to decide what's right for you. I've also heard people spraying perfume or cologne on their clothes and it's staining their clothes. So keep that in mind as well. Um, and it's really just gonna be a personal choice in trying different things. I watched a video 
this guy, he's like a perfume dude, right? He's got like over a million subscribers, right? And he was talking about how much perfume, how much cologne or perfume or whatever to put on. And he said he uses five sprays, five sprays. It was like one, two, three, I don't know where else. It was like one on the chest, two behind the ears, one on the neck and one on the back of the neck so that people could smell him as he walked away. Dude. Like, I know you're a fragrance dude, right? But I don't wanna smell someone they walk away. That's just me personally. I, I feel like that's a lot. I mean, may, maybe that's a thing. I mean, he's he he was saying in the video how much he, he looks for compliments on the way that he smells. So maybe that adds to him. But this is this is the problem with that is there are people that have allergies and aversions to fragrances. And when we're talking about fragrances, it's really important to talk about that. That Rebecca Hertz we talked about earlier that wrote the book. This is something she says in her book. She says in general, things that are high intensity tend to be aversive. You may love a certain symphony, but if someone plays it really loud, it will be unpleasant. Pleasant. And that's what's happening when some people spray on perfume and cologne. It's just too much. And a lot of the reason why people spray on so much is because they want it to last. They want people to notice. But the problem is, is then you gas people out. Just a tip. Number one, don't spray your cologne or perfume underneath your armpits. If you want more information on this, you can check out my natural deodorant journey video and it talks a little bit more about the bacteria that's under our arms. What's gonna happen is you're gonna end up mixing your bacteria with the scent of the perfumer cologne and you are going to uh, have an intensified version of your body odor. So please don't do that. So remember we talked about earlier about the trail behind you. It's called silage. Siage is the technical name for it. If you want to know the trail of scent that's gonna be behind you, one thing you can do is go into a small room, spray how much perfume or cologne that you would spray on yourself into that small room, close the door, walk away, come back 10 to 15 minutes later and see how much of that scent you can still smell in the room. If you can smell a lot, you're gonna have a very long trail. And Yes, you want people to smell you, but you also don't want to hurt anyone by your actions. And also keeping in mind that when you do put it on your pulse points and on warm days, you're going to have a stronger uh, amount of fragrance around you. So I'm asking please, in consideration for like my neighbor who was allergic to fragrances and my chiropractor who I went in one day and the poor man was like dripping from his eyes because a woman half an hour earlier was wearing too much perfume and he was just having this horrible allergic reaction. His eyes were red and teary and he was sniffling because this woman came into his office with too much perfume on. Please think about where you're going before you spray on your perfume. If you're gonna be in small spaces, if you're going into an office, if you're gonna be waiting in a long line where you're gonna be around people. Just think about those around you. Yes, you, we want you to smell good, but at the same time, you're, you, you don't wanna hurt somebody in the process. And there are a lot of people that are sensitive to fragrances. The strongest silage Siage tends to be from eau de parfum. So keep that in mind as well when you're choosing your perfume. And the least one would be from, of course, the body sprays and things like that. Just a couple more tips before I go uh, that I read that I thought were really, really interesting. Just some fun facts is number one, you don't want to shake your fragrance because it can actually mess with the mixture of what is happening in the bottle, which I thought was really weird because you would think that different oils would settle differently, but no, you're not supposed to shake your bottle. And then uh, don't rub your wrists together, which is something that I did for years. And the reason why is it actually kind of kills that top note. When you rub like this, you're creating heat and that is killing your first experience with whatever you're spraying. So if you want to fully experience what you're using, just a little bit of spray and then just kind of air dry it a little bit and you'll get a better experience from it. Even if it's not spread out all over your skin, that's okay. It'll also make your fragrance go away faster. So if you want it to last longer, you don't want to rub. And finally, get to know the scents that you enjoy, the top notes and the heart notes and the base notes that you personally enjoy, and then apply that to descriptions that you read online or in stores and whenever possible, going into stores and smelling things for yourself so you know whether it's something that you like and spraying it on yourself so you know how your pH is reacting to a specific scent before you purchase is extremely helpful.
At this point, my friend, it is your turn. In the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it, I would love to know any of your thoughts on perfume and colognes. What are some of your favorite things? Are there any tips that I didn't say that you have about how to make things last longer or any other tips that you have for our, our community? We would love to read about it. And if someone's comment helps you, definitely give them a thumbs up. Leave them a little comment saying thank you little things in this world do go a long way. And while I'm saying thank you to you for watching, thank you so much to FragranceNet for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a video for you right down there to watch. But if it is time for you to go for the day, thank you so much for watching as long as you did. Mad love to you and I will see you in a video very, very soon.